Hey, it's me, Jason PB. I'm a multi-award winning photographer, a photography educator and writer. In this video, using Adobe Photoshop CC, I'll demonstrate how to successfully remove wrinkles in portraits. Leaving skin texture alone, I'll pass out some choice crow's feet and tone down a few deeper folds to enhance our image. It's important not to completely remove all wrinkles because a good portrait shows depth and dimension to the person. Leaving skin pores and facial hair, no matter how small and inconspicuous, is essential for natural looking portraits. But with some gentle use of a few handy tools, you can get portrait subjects looking like they're well rested, and if you're lucky, a few years younger. So we can go from this, to this. So let's get started. The number one key with portrait editing is to never ever blur the skin. If a subject has poor skin, then use the tools in this video to remove anything unwanted or enhance what's already there. Blurring the skin makes subjects look plastic and unrealistic. It just isn't a good look and most photographers, retouchers and even Joe Public can spot this mistake a mile off. The first step is to make your editing non-destructive. There are a few ways to do this, but the simplest way is to duplicate the layer. In Photoshop, I'm going to use the Windows shortcut Ctrl and J. On a Mac, you can use Command and J. That way, any edits we make can be easily masked out or softly blended into the unedited layer below. In the Tools palette on our left, I'm going to use the Patch tool. The Patch tool is a powerful and underused tool that works excellently for cutting and pasting textures. So I'm going to zoom in onto some wrinkles on the neck here. And with the Patch tool selected, I'm going to draw around a wrinkle to make a selection. Then I'm going to click inside the selection and drag it to a clear section of skin to replace the wrinkle. I recommend using a nearby piece of skin to keep it looking natural as it will copy the texture. Repeat this as many times as you want to remove the wrinkles. The Clone Stamp tool paints with areas from another part of your photo. It should be used sparingly with a large soft brush and lowered opacity. Resize the brush by holding down Alt on the keyboard and the right mouse button and moving left and right, up and down, or press the square bracket keys. Use this to remove heavy bags under the eyes. Simply hold down Alt on your keyboard and left mouse click somewhere near close to the wrinkles on the upper cheek. Then move your cursor over to the wrinkle and let go of Alt. Make a large brush, turn the hardness all the way down to 0% and make sure the opacity of the brush is set to 20%. Then make one or two passes over the wrinkles to lighten them softly. You don't want to completely remove them here because everybody has these lines from newborns to elders so we're naturally used to seeing some darkening under the eyes and that's why we need to keep a little bit of wrinkle still there. I'm going to repeat this for the other eye. Great. Next we're going to use the spot healing tool. The spot healing tool is a great way to remove temporary blemishes and the wrinkles they can cause without having to do any heavy lifting yourself. This tool automatically eradicates spots, marks, dirt and dust very quickly and easily. I'm going to zoom in to a small spot on the portrait here and clicking and dragging over the spot and Photoshop automatically fills in that selection. You can also remove warts, freckles and moles if you so wish, but I prefer to leave anything permanent and take away only what is temporary from my subject. And finally, we'll use a more advanced tool. Natural wrinkles form under the chin when we smile, and while almost all of us have this, some people don't like it. And it's best not to clone stamp a new jawline for your subject because this undermines the subject's natural beauty and they'll be able to tell you've heavily edited their portrait. Instead, go to the Filter tab at the top of the window and choose Liquify. Now we're going to use Liquify 
to softly persuade the crease to join together and thereby reduce its impact in the portrait. So first of all, I'm clicking on the freeze mask tool, making the brush bigger and painting over any areas that I don't want affected. Then I'm going back to the forward warp tool making my brush big enough to cover the entire jawline so that the structure of the jawline stays in place and then I'm just softly pushing it up and into the face to reduce the effect. Click OK when you're done and there's the difference there. If you want you can go in closer and use the clone stamp tool again at 20% to gently lighten the shadow underneath the chin to distract from looking into that area. So there we go, with a few simple tweaks, you can remove wrinkles and keep your portraits looking natural in Adobe Photoshop CC.